Okay. Uh, so this uh, uh, talk will actually cover different types of uh, knee pain and also we'll share with you, uh, you know, un by understanding the causes, uh, how can we, you know, grab the opportunity to prevent it from uh, getting worsened? And also, you know, what are those uh, evidence-based management strategies? Over to you, Chin San. Yes, uh, we are going to run a poll and the poll have three questions. Uh, each question, you just need to choose one of the answer. Uh, we are doing this poll so that we can understand you a little bit better and Ms. Yong will uh, cater some of her presentation more to you. I'm going to launch the poll now. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to end the poll and I'm going to share the result. So Ms. Yong, uh, most of the, our audience are between the 40 to 79 age range. And uh, most of them are like me, sitting most of the time. And I think uh, most of them uh, have mild, a little bit difficulty in daily activities. Can I stop share, Ms. Uh, Yong? Yes, please. Okay, so by uh, knowing uh, better uh, your needs, uh, later we will uh, you know, uh, emphasize more on how to prevent and how to manage uh, mild pain. So I'm going to uh, share with you a video on a simple anatomy of our knee joint. The knee is a complex joint made up of different structures, including bones, tendons, ligaments, and muscles. They all work together to maintain normal function and provide stability to the knee during movement. Having a well-functioning, healthy knee is essential for our mobility and ability to participate in various activities. Understanding the anatomy of the knee enhances your ability to discuss and choose the right treatment procedure for knee problems with your doctor. Bones. The knee is a hinge joint made up of two bones, the thigh bone, femur, and the shin bone, tibia. There are two round knobs at the end of the femur called femoral condyles, which articulate with the flat surface of the tibia called the tibial plateau. The tibial plateau on the inside of the leg is called the medial tibial plateau, and on the outside of the leg, it is called the lateral tibial plateau. The two femoral condyles form a groove on the front anterior side of the knee called the patella femoral groove. A small bone called the patella sits in this groove and forms the kneecap. It acts as a shield and protects the knee joint from direct trauma. A fourth bone called the fibula is the other bone of the lower leg. This forms a small joint with the tibia. This joint has very little movement and is not considered a part of the main joint of the knee. Articular cartilage and menisci. Movement of the bones causes friction between the articulating surfaces. To reduce this friction, all articulating surfaces involved in movement are covered with a white, shiny, slippery layer called articular cartilage. The articulating surface of the femoral condyles tibial plateaus and the back of the patella are covered with this cartilage. The cartilage provides a smooth surface that facilitates easy movement. To further reduce friction between the articulating surfaces of the bones, the knee joint is lined by a synovial membrane which produces a thick, clear fluid called synovial fluid. This fluid lubricates and nourishes the cartilage and bones inside the joint capsule. Within the knee joint between the femur and tibia, there are two C-shaped cartilaginous structures called menisci. 
menisci function to provide stability to the knee by spreading the weight of the upper body across the whole surface of the tibial plateau. The menisci help in load bearing by preventing weight from concentrating onto a small area, which could damage the articular cartilage. The menisci also act as a cushion between the femur and tibia by absorbing the shock produced by activities such as walking, running, and jumping. Ligaments. Ligaments are tough bands of tissue that connect one bone to another bone. The ligaments of the knee function to stabilize the knee joint. There are two important groups of ligaments that hold the bones of the knee joint together. Collateral ligaments and cruciate ligaments. Collateral ligaments are present on either side of the knee. They function to prevent the knee from moving too far during side-to-side -side motion. The collateral ligament on the inside is called the medial collateral ligament, MCL. And the collateral ligament on the outside is called the lateral collateral ligament, LCL. Cruciate ligaments. This group of ligaments present inside the knee joint control the back and forth motion of the knee. The cruciate ligament in the front of the knee is called anterior cruciate ligament or ACL and the cruciate ligament in the back of the knee is called the posterior cruciate ligament or PCL. Muscles. There are two major muscles, the quadriceps and the hamstrings, which enable movement of the knee joint. The quadriceps muscles are located in the front of the thigh. When the quadriceps muscles contract, the knee straightens. The hamstrings are located in the back of the thigh. When the hamstring muscles contract, the knee bends. Tendons. Tendons are structures that attach muscles to the bone. The quadriceps muscles of the knee meet just above the patella and attach to it through a tendon called the quadriceps tendon. The patella further attaches to the tibia through a tendon called the patella tendon. The quadriceps muscle, quadriceps tendon, and patellar tendon all work together to straighten the knee. Similarly, the hamstring muscles at the back of the leg are attached to the knee joint with the hamstring tendon. The knee is a complex joint with many different parts that function together to allow movement and provide support to the body's full weight when standing, walking, and running. Okay, so uh, after the video, I hope that uh, you know, we have a better idea of what is actually inside of our knee and uh, which uh, structure in charge of uh, which functions. Um, in fact, interestingly, uh, our knee is actually the largest and is actually one of the most complex joints in our body. Okay, now um, I'm going to introduce the different types of uh, knee pain, uh, you know, including uh, their main symptoms, so that uh, you, know, you have a clearer picture of what could be uh, you know, the type of the knee pain that you are suffering now. So um, I do have a, a you know, recommendation for you guys to actually look at uh, how to manage your acute knee pain uh, in case uh, you, know, you sprain your knee uh, with uh, this uh, video uh, here, um, you know, so that you can actually know how to uh, manage your acute uh, knee sprain when uh, you when you need to actually uh, you know do so, so um, for the most common type of the uh, you know acute knee pain, uh, acute meaning is a sudden onset and usually with a very direct and uh, obvious uh, causes to the to the uh, you know uh, sudden onset of pain. So uh, actually the the knee sprain uh, is also very common, uh, not just an uh, ankle sprain. Ankle sprain uh, is actually one of the most common sprain, and but knee sprain as well. So uh, I think most of us, uh, you know, uh, yeah, once or twice in our lifetime may uh, suffer from, uh, you know, uh, acute uh, knee sprain. So what are the main symptoms uh, when you suffer from uh, acute uh, knee sprain is basically if you tear your ACL, the anterior crucial ligament, you may hear a pop. You may also notice uh, your knee give away and also, uh, you know, may become very unstable. 
uh, and the pain is actually uh, you know quite bad is it can be bad enough for you to actually feel like you know vomiting and uh, you know it will actually follow with a, a very obvious uh, knee swelling over the next uh, couples of hours because of the ACL bleeds uh, when it is torn so for treatment wise surgical repair uh, is often recommended for high level at least uh, who demands uh, optional outcomes uh, conservative treatment and knee brace uh, may, may prove uh, sufficient for those who does not demand uh, you know, quite so much uh, from their knees. Now, the second uh, type of uh, acute knee pain may caused by the tendon ruptures. So both the quadriceps and uh, patella tendons may rupture partially or completely. A quadriceps uh, tendon uh, rupture typically occurs uh, in recreational athletes uh, older than 40 years old. And uh, patella tendon rupture typically occurs in younger people who have had previous tendonitis or steroid injections to the knee. Now, what are the main symptoms of uh, tendon ruptures? The, ten the ruptures of uh, either the quadriceps or patella tendon causes pain, especially when trying to kick or extend the knee. So those people with uh, complete ruptures are unable to extend the knee. So if uh, you, know, you suspect that uh, you may suffer from a tendon rupture, you try to extend your knee and you found that you can't, uh, you know, most likely you actually suffer from a complete uh, rupture. The patella is also often out of place, either outward. So if it is actually the patella tendon you know, rupture, then the patella will, will be out of, of place. You know, it's actually more outwardly. For downward symptoms, it's actually more you know, for the quadriceps tendon rupture. So that's the difference. If a patella, then it will be actually shifted outwards. If it is you know, a quadriceps tendon, then uh, patella will be uh, shifted downwards. For treatment, uh, for tendon rupture require urgent care. So if you suspect that you suffer from a tendon rupture, uh, you, yeah, you, you actually need to uh, see doctor immediately. Uh, typically will need surgical repair, uh, while a partial rupture may be treated with uh, splinting alone uh, without surgery. For a uh, meniscal uh, injury, The meniscus are, are typically, uh, you know, uh, due to uh, overuse. Uh, so often a piece of a meniscus will tear off and uh, float uh, in the knee joint. So the symptoms are, you know, uh, mostly causing the knee to, to be in a lock-in position uh, or either click or, or grind uh, through its uh, range of motion. So when you move your knee, you know, uh, it's, it's the, the meniscus actually causing the clicking and the, uh, and the grinding. Meniscal uh, injury may also cause the knee to give way. And swelling uh, typically accompanies uh, these symptoms, although the swelling may be much uh, less severe than uh, the ACL injury. For treatment-wise, meniscal injury often require uh, endoscopic uh, surgical repair. A locking knee or a knee that uh, gives, uh, you know, should be evaluated uh, for uh, you know, endoscopic uh, repair. For knee, uh, this location uh, is actually a medical emergency. So this location of the knee is caused by a particularly powerful blow to the knee, right? The, the lower leg uh, becomes completely replaced uh, with uh, uh, relation to the upper leg. This uh, replacement stretches and frequently tears not only the ligaments of the knee, but also uh, arter arteries and nerves. Untreated arterial injury uh, leave the lower leg without a blood supply. So if such circulation is not restored, uh, you know, amputation may be required. That's why uh, knee dislocation uh, is actually a, a medical emergency uh, you know, in nature. Knee nerve uh, injury, on the other hand, may leave the lower leg uh, viable, you know, viable, but uh, uh, without uh, strength or sensation because the nerve uh, you know, uh, yeah, will be blocked uh, by, uh, by the, the dislocations to actually send back the sensory input from our organs. So in terms of symptom wise, the knee dislocation are severely painful and produce an obvious uh, deformity. So basically the, the knee, uh, you know, is, you, can, you can see that it's obviously out of shape. Many dislocations are reduced or put back into alignment on their own. Uh, you know, as uh, this occurs, many uh, will report uh, feeling a, a dull uh, club. For treatment wise, if the knee dislocation has not been put back into place on its own, the doctor will immediately reduce the dislocation. Medical treatment, however, does not stop here. 
whether uh, this location reduced by itself or is put back into place uh, in the hospital, it requires further evaluation and care. After reduction, people with uh, these injuries are observed in a hospital where they usually do a number of tests to ensure that no arterial or nerve injury has occurred. If such injury is found, it must be repaired immediately in the operating room. Next is a dislocated kneecap, uh, which is actually the, the patella bone. Right? A common injury caused uh, by direct trauma or forceful straightening of the leg, such as uh, an uh, injury that happens when serving a volleyball or tennis. Kneecap dislocation is more common in a uh, woman, uh, especially the uh, overweight ones and the not uh, knee uh, people. And in those uh, with uh, high riding uh, kneecaps, Symptom-wise, if you have this injury, you will notice the patella being out of, space, out of place and uh, you may have a difficulty flexing or extending your knee. In terms of treatment, the doctor will move the patella back to, the, to, to it, uh, its own place, uh, reduce the dislocation. Even if patella goes back into place by itself, it needs to be x-rayed for a fracture. After reducing the dislocation and ensuring the absence of a fracture, the doctors will treat this injury by splinting the knee to allow the soft tissue around the patella to heal, followed by strengthening exercises to keep the patella in line. This injury often causes damage to the, to the cartilage on the back of the patella. Now, I will spend uh, a little bit more time to talk about uh, chronic knee pain, uh, mainly it's because uh, you know, uh, most of us are between 40 to uh, you know, 79, uh, where you know, chronic knee pain uh, are one of the most uh, common uh, knee pain symptoms uh, among this age group. Now, um, arthritis of the knee is actually an uh, inflammatory disorder of the knee joint that is uh, often painful. Uh, however, arthritis has many causes, so we need to differentiate what causes uh, the arthritis and the management is different. For the knee osteoarthritis, uh, I will, in short form, we call it OA. So the OA knee is caused by the degeneration of cartilage in the knee. In its uh, extreme form, the menisci, uh, the cartilage will be completely eroded. And the firmer, the bone, uh, our uh, thigh bone, will rub on the tibia. The tibia is a lower leg bone uh, and you know, on a, a bone or bone uh, friction. In terms of symptom-wise, our OA knee uh, causes a chronically painful knee that is often more painful with activity. So that's why a lot of our uh, seniors, uh, you know, they seldom move uh, or they are not moving enough, uh, you know, mainly because they're uh, limited by the, the painful OA knees. In terms of treatment, the treatment is aimed at pain control so later on, we will learn uh, you know, some uh, menu technique on uh, how to relieve our knee pain with uh, over-the-counter pain relievers uh, or you know, the techniques that can be taught by the physiotherapist uh, you know, uh, for your conditions. And uh, also including the anti-inflammatory uh, medications, either over-the-counter or by prescription, can be helpful. For um, the... For the gel that uh, you know, often injected uh, to the knee over a course of uh, three to six weeks can provide a substantial relief uh, for one year or more uh, you know, for the, the temporary uh, pain relief. The very severe type of uh, OA knee can be treated with uh, narcotic uh, pain uh, you know, um, medications or knee uh, joint replacement, uh, the, the surgery for the end stage uh, OA knee. Uh, you know, then uh, it, it basically the total knee uh, replacement is actually, uh, you know, replacing your knee joint with a uh, synthetic joints. Additionally, physical therapy manage uh, OA knee pain and uh, knee function uh, from, especially, you know, uh, from early stages will be actually more beneficial. So the second type of the uh, arthritis is actually, uh, you know, rheumatoid arthritis uh, of the knee. Uh, in short form, we call uh, RA. So RA is actually a cognitive uh, tissue disease of the whole body. So it's a systemic uh, disease that affects uh, many joints. So uh, of course, uh, the main uh, affected joint are knees, but uh, also can be, uh, you know, uh, your toe or ankle. So in terms of symptom-wise, uh, you know, in addition to the knee pain, uh, rheumatoid arthritis uh, may produce a uh, morning stiffness. So it's, it's uh, slightly different from the OA knee. OA knee, usually you, uh, you, know, you feel more stiff or, or more pain uh, in the evening uh, you know, after your whole day activity. However, in RA, 
uh, you know, uh, the morning stiffness is more obvious and uh, also the pain is actually, uh, you know, at the start of the, the, the early morning. So for treatment wise, uh, treatments include uh, pain medications, anti-inflammatory medications, uh, you know, and, and the prescriptions of uh, uh, the, the drugs that can uh, aim to slow down the disease uh, progressions. So the, the second, uh, the third type uh, is actually the, uh, you know, gout and the pseudo doubt, uh, gout. Uh, but the, these are severely painful, uh, you know, forms of arthritis are caused by the sharp crystals that form in the knees and other joints. These crystals are, you know, are, are forming as a result. Yes. Any uh, issue? Uh, no issue. Uh, what happened? Oh, I think we lost you for a while. Oh, is it? Yeah, we lost your sound for a while. Um, can you hear me now? Uh, yes, we can hear you now. Oh, uh, uh, from when you lost me? About a minute ago. Okay. From this slide, do you need me to repeat this slide? Maybe the crystalline arthritis. Okay, uh, I will repeat uh, this uh, para. So for uh, the gout and uh, pseudo gout, right? These are very severely painful form of arthritis uh, are caused by the sharp crystal that form in our knee and other joints. These crystal crystals can form as a result of the defects in the absorption or metabolism of uh, various natural substances such as uh, uric acid, which uh, produces uh, gout and calcium. Uh, you know, the pseudo gout. So in terms of treatment, the treatment is uh, aimed uh, at controlling inflammation uh, with the anti-inflammatory medications and uh, also to actually help the metabolism uh, of uh, different uh, chemicals uh, that can actually lead to the crystal uh, formations. Are the sounds still okay? Yes, it's good. Okay. So now, uh, when it comes to this uh, uh, bursitis, uh, to diagnose the bursitis is actually quite uh, you know, uh, common because of the, the, uh, the trauma, infections, and uh, uh, the crystallites uh, deposit. Uh, various uh, bursitis of the knee may become inflamed. So, so actually, bursitis is actually quite common. Uh, we have uh, observed a uh, different degree of the bursitis uh, among our seniors as well. Um, the symptom wise, uh, you know, um, they usually quite related uh, with our uh, vocational activities. So, for example, uh, you know, one of my uh, senior patients, uh, she's very hardworking. She cleaned her house until crystal clear, you know, and, and uh, you know, she, she actually uh, spent a lot of time actually uh, do a lot of squatting. So, 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 so we also call this uh, bursitis uh, like a uh, housemate uh, knee or, or carpet uh, layers knee because they actually load their knee uh, for prolonged hours. In terms of treatment wise, uh, treatment usually include uh, home care uh, with uh, uh, the therapy and uh, also uh, the, the anti-inflammatory medications. For severe bursitis, however, can be treated with uh, you know, uh, steroid. I will move on to uh, infection. All right, so infections are caused by, uh, you know, the, the infectious uh, uh, causes. So usually will accompany with uh, if, uh, symptoms like fever, uh, but the less severe one may not have uh, fever symptoms. In terms of uh, treatment, new swelling and pain in the knee must be evaluated for infection by a doctor. So if, uh, you know, you have uh, uh, the acute, uh, you know, swelling of your uh, knee and uh, pain that, uh, you know, suspect is actually caused by uh, infections, then, uh, you know, you must actually see a doctor as well because then they can actually rule out the, the infection causes and treat uh, the infection accordingly. So the treatment usually include intensive uh, antibiotic therapy, aspiration of the knee joint, meaning uh, draw the, the fluid from the joint or surgical drainage may also be recommended. The next uh, will be the, uh, you know, uh, the patellar femoral uh, syndromes and the chondromalacia uh, patella. These two conditions represent a continuum of disease uh, caused by the patella uh, mistracking. So just now in the, in the video, anatomy video, you can see that the patella is actually uh, tracking along the groove uh, quite uh, smoothly. 
So when patella is essentially uh, you know, uh, having a mistracking symptoms, what happens is uh, you know, usually uh, it will actually rub against the inner or outer femur rather than tracking straight down to the middle. As a result, the joint on uh, either the inner or outer side will become inflamed and causing pain that is actually worse with activity or prolonged sitting. So just now from our pro, uh, profile survey, uh, most of our, uh, you know, our audience are sitting uh, most of the time, uh, especially during COVID-19, uh, I also working from home and I also actually sit for quite long hours. And, and you may feel that you know, your, your, uh, your knee joint uh, is actually not very comfortable. And uh, you know, as the condition progresses, softening and roughening of the articular cartilage uh, on the underside of the patella uh, occurs. So leading to the control malicia uh, patella. So in terms of treatment wise, uh, you know, uh, we offer home care with uh, price therapy, anti-inflammatory medications and exercises, such as uh, straight leg raises. Later we will learn how to do it. That balance the muscles around the patella work for most people. Physical therapy to assess the factors that may contribute to the disease uh, process guide the management to include exercise, bracing uh, or taping of the patella, right? or the uh, commercial arch uh, support for the arch of the foot, or orthotic supports that uh, correct the foot mechanics and may reduce the uh, abnormal forces on the knee. Severe cases of uh, patella uh, femoral syndromes or control malacia can be treated surgically through uh, a variety of uh, procedures. So uh, for the other knee conditions, uh, uh, we call jumper's uh, knee. Uh, this is actually the inflammation of the tendon, of the quadriceps tendon at the upper point of the patella, where it inserts, or tendonitis of the patella tendon either at the lower point of the patella or at the place where it inserts onto the tibia, called the tu tibia tuberosity. And the bump is about two inches uh, below the knee uh, on the front side. Jumper's knee is, uh, is being named because typically seen in uh, basketball players, volleyball players, and people doing other jumping sports. In terms of symptoms, right, it actually causes a very localized pain that is uh, worse uh, with activity. It usually hurts more when you jump up uh, than when you land because jumping actually put more stress on the tendon of the knees. So the tendon, uh, if uh, you, know, you can recall, is actually a soft tissue, connective tissue that is connecting the joint and the, you know, the muscle. So the bone and the muscle, uh, the, the one that connecting them, uh, we call tendon. So in terms of treatment, the home therapy with a uh, price uh, regime uh, along with uh, anti-inflammatory drugs uh, is the basis of the treatment to manage the acute phase. Particularly important are uh, rest, eyes, and uh, the uh, anti-inflammatory uh, drugs, which will help to stop the pain and break the cycle of uh, inflammation. After controlling the pain, uh, you know, we should slowly start an exercise uh, program to strengthen the quadriceps, hamstring, hip and calf muscle before resuming our spot of choice a few weeks uh, down the line. Also bracing of the extensor mechanism uh, you know, when we actually need to extend our knee. So if uh, we have a better support to do so, may help uh, remove the stress from the tendon as well. So the next one is actually a very rare uh, disease that uh, occurs uh, you know, uh, in the um, yeah, uh, teenagers or athletes uh, where repetitive extension of the knee causes inflammation and injury of the tibia uh, tubicle. The body uh, protrusions at the top of the shin, just below the kneecap. So, so children who suffer from this uh, syndrome report pain at the tibia tubicle quite specific. So this pain is typically worse when they extend the leg. The tibia tubicle is tender to touch or over time begins to actually protrude more uh, because of the chronic inflammation that uh, stimulates the bone to grow. So in terms of our treatment, uh, this is actually a self-limiting uh, you know, uh, conditions that usually resolve as the tibia tubicle stop growing uh, with the ends of uh, you know, uh, about age uh, 17 uh, in males uh, and about age uh, 15 in females. The treatment wise is also quite conservative and includes a price or anti-inflammatory uh, you know, medications to minimize the acute pain from activity. Physiotherapy uh, you know, will identify the limitation uh, to reduce the stress to the tibia tubicle and all to often uh, you know, includes the strength, strengthening of the hip and the core, core muscles uh, you know, of our trunk. So in very severe cases, uh, splinting of the knee uh, for a few weeks will help to reduce the pain and uh, you know, stop the inflammation cycle. 
The last, uh, you know, uh, types of the knee pain, uh, we call it uh, iliotibia band syndrome. It's, it's actually to name after the, the structure that is being affected. So a fibrous uh, ligament called the iliotibia band extends from our outside of our pivot bone to the outside of the tibia. When this band is tight, it will rub against the bottom outer portions of our femur, right? the, the lateral femoral condyle. So the, in terms of symptoms, uh, the distant runner typically suffer from this uh, condition. So we also name it, uh, you know, runner's knee. So, uh, you know, they complain the outside knee pain, usually, uh, you know, at the lateral uh, femoral condyle. And at the earlier stage, the pain will typically come on 10 minutes to 15 minutes into a run and improve uh, with rest. So in terms of our treatment, uh, the most important aspect of treating iliotibial tibial band syndrome is to identify why it is tight. So physio will evaluate the mechanic and uh, also prescribe the exercises, which uh, may include stretching the band, the iliotibia band. And uh, one way to do this is uh, to actually, uh, you know, um, yeah, place the right leg behind the left uh, while standing with your left side about, uh, you know, two feet to three feet from a wall. Uh, then lean, uh, you know, towards your left for 20 to 30 seconds using the wall to help uh, you support yourself. In addition, the stretching the iliotibial tibial band, uh, you know, the price therapy and uh, you know, anti-inflammatory medications are uh, maybe of some help as well. Okay, so um, after, uh, you know, uh, knowing that uh, we have uh, many different types of uh, knee pains and uh, different causes, uh, you know, causing different knee pains and that's why the management and prevention uh, will be different as well. Now we are coming to the, uh, you know, the most common type of the knee pain uh, prevention uh, opportunities. So I will actually spend more time to talk about, uh, you know, uh, the osteoarthritis knee, uh, which are commonly, uh, you know, uh, yeah, many of us uh, suffer uh, from. So for knee pain prevention, right, uh, the, the first uh, strategy is actually to stay within your uh, BMI healthy range. So uh, if you uh, not yet, uh, you know, uh, yeah, learn how to calculate your BMI before, uh, you know, please uh, uh, look at the, the, this, uh, you know, uh, bottom uh, corner to actually uh, learn how to calculate it because it's, it's actually quite important for you to do this uh, self-monitoring and self-management over time. So throughout our life course, uh, you know, of course, our body weight, uh, you know, up and down. But if you can actually keep it within, uh, you know, um, yeah, at least, uh, you know, the normal range or to slightly overweight, not too much, uh, you know, I, yeah, try not to go into the, the, the upper bound of the overweight, uh, you know, into the obese because this is very harmful to our knee. So this is the, the you know, this is actually the table uh, to help you, uh, you know, interpret your BMI. So for us, right, uh, Asian female uh, majority, it is actually better to actually uh, stay, uh, you know, uh, around this range so that, uh, you know, uh, we have a little bit buffer, but not, uh, you know, uh, too much of the, the fat tissue that is actually taking up our soft tissue. Because, you know, you, it is okay for you to, to be a little bit overweight, right? But you need to have a strong muscle to support your body weight. So, so if, uh, you know, if we can't really, uh, you know, go into this range uh, in lower bound, if you are here, then, uh, you know, yes, you are doing a very good job here and uh, try not to go into the overweight. But I, I you know, I can see that uh, there's actually increasing uh, number of uh, people, uh, you know, is actually overweight. So if you are here, what happened is, uh, you know, you can actually do more strengthening exercise, right, to actually uh, reduce uh, the body fat uh, percentage and uh, increase your lean, uh, you know, muscle fiber uh, percentage in your body. So, so it is actually still okay to, to, to be uh, here uh, with a strong muscle. Uh, I know, uh, yeah, instead of uh, yeah, being uh, here with uh, uh, yeah, a lot of uh, uh, muscle weakness. So even if your BMI is actually within the normal range, uh, you know, it is actually very important for you to uh, you know, um, yeah, look at the, the percentage of your body fat and the lean muscle. So it's not just the M uh, BMI can actually help uh, prevent knee pain. Uh, it is actually a combination of, uh, you know, uh, maintain our BMI uh, and also to actually improve our muscle strength. So this, uh, you know, this uh, plate, healthy plate is, is uh, you know, uh, highly recommended for our healthy eating habit. So uh, this is, this is actually a kind of like a common set. I think everybody knows. So basically you eat uh, more fruits and vegetables, you know, and for the meat, uh, the portion is about, you know, uh, a quarter of your healthy plate. 
and uh, the carbo, uh, you know, also a quarter as well. So some people ask me whether, you know, uh, they can actually just, uh, you know, uh, do without the carbo. Actually, it's not recommended to do without the carbo. It is actually still essential for us to actually have uh, the carbo uh, intake at the one uh, quarter of our plate. Yeah, but uh, yes, uh, you know, um, do eat more uh, fruits and veggie as much as possible. So next slide, uh, you know, we are going into the actual exercises. So I'm going to play a video and, uh, you know, by uh, looking at the video, you will have an overview of uh, what are the useful exercises for our knee. Chronic knee pain. Please consult your primary care provider or physical therapist before starting an exercise program. This video is designed to help you perform the correct technique of exercises that have been given to you by your healthcare professional. This strengthening and stretching program is designed to increase your strength and flexibility so that you can perform more activities you enjoy with less effort. Choose a time of day that best fits your daily routine. Please contact your primary care provider or physical therapist if you have questions or concerns. Straight leg raise. Begin by lying on a bed or a mat on the floor. Bend one knee and put your foot on the floor or mat to protect your back. With your other leg, tighten your front thigh muscle and raise your leg to the mid calf of the other leg. Hold for five seconds and lower back to the bed or mat. Be sure to breathe normally as you complete the exercise. Repeat this for 10 repetitions for three sets, three to five times per week. Repeat the exercise on the opposite leg. Common error, lifting your leg too quickly, lifting your leg too high. Don't lift or lower too quickly. You want to feel the muscle in the front of your thigh working. Don't lift higher than the level of your bent knee. Side straight leg raise. Begin by lying on your side on a bed or a mat on the floor. Bend your bottom leg for support during the exercise. Your top leg should be in line with your shoulders and hips. There should not be a bend at the hip of your top leg. Tighten the muscle on the front of your thigh and slowly raise your top leg up six to eight inches. Keep your knee straight as you lift. Lift and lower slowly and in control. Be sure to breathe normally as you complete the exercise. Repeat the exercise on the opposite leg. Repeat the exercise on each leg for 10 repetitions for three sets, three to five times per week. Common error, roll your hips forward or back. Don't let your hips roll forward or back as you lift. Keep your leg in line with your shoulders and hips. Seated hamstring. Begin by sitting on a sturdy chair on a non-slip surface. Bend one knee, putting one foot flat on the floor. Straighten your other leg, putting your heel on the floor. Tighten your abdominal muscles to keep your back and hips in a stable position. Gently lean forward from your hips until a stretch is felt behind the straight thigh. Breathe normally as you hold the stretch for 30 seconds. Repeat three times on each side. This stretch may be done daily. Here is an alternate position to stretch your hamstring. Lying down on your back, raise your leg and hold the back of your thigh until a stretch is felt behind your knee and thigh. Common error. Letting your back round as you bend at your hips. Letting your back round as you stretch. Over stretching. When bending forward, you can probably go farther as you let your back round, but this does not allow you to stretch the correct muscle on the back of your thigh. Remember to tighten your abdominals to support your back. Don't let your back round. Keep your gaze forward. Feel a mild stretch behind your knee or thigh. Wall squats. Stand with your heels 18 to 20 inches from the wall with your feet shoulder width apart. Lean your back against the wall or closed door. Bend your knees and slide your body on the wall or a door until you feel your thigh muscles working or you reach a position like you're sitting on a chair. Breathe normally and hold the position for 10 seconds and return to standing. Common error, putting your feet too close to the wall or your feet too close together. Quad stretch. Begin the exercise in standing with two chairs on a non-slip surface or a counter in a chair. Stand on one leg, holding on to the back of one chair or counter, and bend your other knee so your one foot is on a surface or chair behind you. Feel a gentle stretch in the front of your thigh. Breathe normally and hold the stretch for 30 seconds and repeat three times. This stretch may be done daily. Common error, using a surface that is too high. If you feel a cramp in the back of your bent leg, the surface is too high. It is important to keep your knee pointed to the floor.
Okay, so that's uh, you know, uh, the usually quite a common exercises uh, for a program for us to recommend for our patients with OA knees. Now, uh, to actually keep our knee joint flexible uh, is actually something that we should do it for long term. Uh, it always seems young. I want to emphasize that it is also important for our children uh, that is actually at the school age uh, to, to actually do flexi uh, you know, flexibility exercise uh, for their joints as well. So, so the, the knee joints, right, is actually a very mobile joint that actually require uh, regular stretching uh, to actually keep the flexibility so that we can actually meet our uh, activity demand. Now, uh, by actually sharing the, the video with uh, you guys, uh, next, uh, you know, we are going to actually go into how to do it uh, correctly and, uh, you know, take care of uh, certain details when you do the exercise. I'm going to share with you, uh, you know, some very specific, uh, you know, uh, pain relief uh, technique and also uh, some stretching and strengthening exercise uh, with video. So what you're going to do, what you may not realize is when the knee bends, it also turns. So there's a, the, it, when the knee is bending, this bottom bone here is actually turning. Yeah, it rotates slightly. It's not, it's not significant, but it's subtle, but it's important. So especially if you, if, you, if you don't have as much knee bend as you should have, and it feels like it's getting blocked somewhat mm -hmm. after arthritis or after some injury, what you can try, and this should be pain-free by the way. Sure. I don't want pain with this. So I'm going to actually, yeah, he's going to grab on there. I'm grabbing the lower part of the tibia here. Uh, I mean, the upper part of the tibia and I'm turning it. I'm turning it this way. I'm turning it towards the other leg. So you kind of get a hold in the front. That's the bony part. You can do yep. that. And I'm turning it. His thumbs are in the back. Yep. Behind and then as I turn, I'm bending the knee. Right. Okay. Uh, if it is possible, uh, please, uh, you know, if you want to actually try this technique, uh, you know, you can do so now so that you can experience, uh, you know, what do you mean by uh, turning the knee a little bit uh, inward when you do this uh, stretching exercise, uh, you know, so that you can actually, uh, you know, uh, yeah, ask uh, questions uh, if you have uh, any doubts. Um, I, I would like to repeat a little bit, uh, you know, uh, for this technique, because this technique is very useful to relieve the pain and so that you can actually do stretching exercise uh, within the pain-free range turns so there's a the, it, when the knee is bending this bottom bone here is actually turning yeah it rotates slightly it's not it's not significant but it's subtle but it's important so especially if you if you if you don't have as much knee bend as you should have and it feels like it's getting blocked somewhat mm -hmm. after arthritis or after some injury what you can try and this should be pain free by the way, sure. I don't want pain with this. So I'm gonna actually, yeah, he's gonna grab on there. I'm grabbing the lower part of the tibia here. Uh, I mean, the upper part of the tibia and I'm turning it. I'm turning it this way. I'm turning it towards the other leg. So you kind of get a hold in the front. That's the bony part. You can yep. do that. And I'm then, turning it. His thumbs are in the back yep. behind. And, and then as I turn, I'm bending the knee. Right. And I'm going back and forth. And I'm doing this turn the whole time. I'm holding the turn the whole time. Now, again, this should not increase pain. This should not cause more pain. It should sometimes actually feel better. Right. Then you know that you're doing the right thing. And you can bend it further then you're right on the money. Less yeah. pain, more range of motion. And there you, you can do two sets of 10 of those. Sure. So another common problem with that people have, Brad, is that they are having pain underneath the kneecap itself. Sure. Uh, underneath the patella. So one thing you want to do is you want to stretch that kneecap okay. so that it has more motion and it's not grinding down onto the bone as much. Right. So basically we're doing a patella mobilization, we call it. That's right. So you're going to have to take a look at my ugly leg here, but Oh, it's uh, not that ugly, Bob. No, I guess it, is. it is. It is. It is that ugly, yeah. So Brad's going to show on, we're going to get a little close up on Facebook, and, and Lonnie's going to kind of go in on the, on the camera there. So the first thing you want to do is you're going to, you know, you're going to make sure the leg is very relaxed. You know, the, the quadricep, if, you, if it's not relaxed, you can't move that kneecap at all. So you're going to let it uh, support it on something. And now, as you can see, I'm using my two thumbs, and I'm pushing down like this. And I'm pushing the kneecap down. And for some people, this is kind of a icky feeling, Brad. Right. Would you say they don't like this? Yeah, you have to be relaxed and yeah. just let it go. And now I'm going to take my other two fingers and I'm pushing it up. So I'm pushing it towards me. I'm giving it a stretch. Yeah, I think your hands are in the way to see from the All top. Right. There you go. 
So I'm stretching it this way. That's not lipstick on his knee there. That, that's, I put that on. Yeah, he so, put arrows there. Yeah, so we know the direction we're moving it. And the final one is I'm going to go this way. I don't know if Lonnie can see this or not, but I'm going to push the kneecap this way because quite often it's tight and it wants to go out to the outside. And right. That's why it's giving you troubles. So I'm going to push the kneecap over this way. You got any of that, Lonnie? Yeah. She actually is smiling, so I don't know what that means. <laughs> so, Brian, you ought to see this from our view. <laughs> yeah, these, these are stretches you can do a lot. Right. I mean, they, these are, especially if you're getting pain underneath right. the kneecap. If you feel like grinding when yep. you do that, it's a good one to do. Now, they call that a lateral release if they do the surgery. So, we're trying, doing this could actually save you that. Right, that, that surgery. surgery, right? Yeah. So, if you have patellofemoral syndrome, that is what the, uh, one of the things you're going to want to do is. So it, it is very important that, uh, you know, your, when you do this uh, patella uh, mobility exercise, your whole leg needs to be very relaxed. So, so you, you, when, you are, when you are watching the video, uh, you can actually put your hands on the kneecap and you can, uh, you know, try to actually feel uh, where your kneecap is. So it's the patella bone, uh, you know, uh, in layman's terms, uh, kneecap. So uh, you can actually uh, go and feel it. And uh, you know, if uh, you can actually relax your leg, you can actually try to do it in the same time. Uh, that stretch. All right, the next one, Brad, is this, this is a good one for people who have maybe a lot, some arthritis in their knee and their knee doesn't straighten out quite all the way. Sure. It, it, you know, um, and what they have found, Brad, Brad and Lonnie, is that- What if about you, the people out there? And, and subscribers. <laughs> um, if, if, uh, if you actually increase the, the, the knee extension a little bit even, it helps decrease the pain. Sure. So it, even if it's a modest amount, so you can tell whether or not your knee is not straight as the other one is, if you just put both legs up, and if one's down straight like this and the other one's up a little bit, you know that one needs work because that one's not, not straightening as much as it should. Exactly. So what you can do is you're, you're actually going to put it up on a, a stool like this, and you're going to actually take both arms, and you can just go pressure on, pressure off. Yeah, for this uh, exercise, you can actually, uh, you know, take note of uh, where the hand is so that you can actually apply, uh, you know, the right uh, pressure. So your hand should not be too far away from your kneecap. It should be as close as possible. Uh, you know, the main uh, objective is to actually have the good leverage uh, to actually apply the pressure so that it can be straightened. Pressure on, pressure off. Now, they might be asking, how much pressure, Bob? Bob, tell us how much. Well, I don't want pain, but, I, you know, you can bump into the pain a right. little bit. So, so after repetitions, after four or five, the pain should be reducing and maybe a little more range. Then you know you're doing the right, right. thing. And I would do the first day, I would only do 10 of these and see how it is the next day sure. or how you did that night. I had one guy that got a little too uh, exuberant on this oh, and he, he did like 30, 40 and he was not even going to come back to therapy. Yeah, uh, he but overdid it. He overdid it. it. was He couldn't sleep that night, which means that he did something. You know, he actually he got things moving, but he irritated. Things. But in the end, it did work for him, by sure. the way. It, okay. just, it, it did work really quite well. All right. Next one, Brad. Um, the same is true if the knee is not bending as well as it should. Sure, yep. um, we did that one, but you can also just do a straight, straight old lay down and do some of these pressure on, pressure off, yep. pressure on, pressure off. And where you put your hands on this can make a difference. Sometimes it's a little better if you go up closer to the knee and or sometimes down here, but get a little more it, leverage. Do which way it feels better and it makes the knee move better. Yeah, so uh, again, uh, you know, the details of the exercise, uh, you know, where your hand should be and uh, how hard you should push. Basically, it should be within the pain-free range. Uh, so we should not have, uh, you know, the pain being aggravated uh, with the exercises. In fact, these exercises can help relieve the chronic pain. Better with less pain. You can do that one in a chair too, or on a, a higher bench like this. You can put it up there if you can get your leg up there, and you can do a pressure on this way too, and pressure off. Sure. Pressure on, pressure off. That, that's a nice one you can do into a stairwell. Sure. If you got, especially if there's armrests or armrests, uh, handles on both sides. You know what do you call those? The banisters. <laughs> <laughs> railings? I, lost, I don't know. Yeah, the railings. I lost it there, Bob. Oh, do you want to show a quad stretch, Brett? Sure. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you've got good balance, you know, use something to hold on to if you've got a balance problem. As long as you're capable of stretching like this, those quadriceps will stretch really nice. Not if your like quads this. are really tight, 
they're going to pull on that kneecap sure. and it's going to grind it up some more. So <laughs> it, it's it's important that this is a, a you know you can get stretch this muscle out. Right. It if the knees up like here, if it won't be stretching. You want to bring it down here, but but not like this either. Good tall posture, knee down. Every so uh, the alignment here is uh, very important. So we should not be bending our trunk when we do this exercise. And for the more senior one, uh, you know, it will be recommended for them to have something to hold on when, the, when they do this exercise for safety. Everything aligned, and then you're going to feel those quads stretch right there. Yep, and you can actually do this laying down too. You can do it laying flat on your stomach, but you can also do it this way, Brad. Sure. You, can, you can bring your leg back like this. You can lay on your side, and this is an easy way to do it. This yep. is a, a, a simple way to do it. And here I can pull it back and give it a good stretch. Right, right. So next one, Brad, if you're having a lot of pain on the outside of your knee, sure. and it might be coming from your IT band. Right, sure. which is a, a wide uh, band and down from here, and it goes up to the, the muscle. What's that muscle again called? Uh, TFL? Uh, TFL, that's right, tensor fascia lata. Ah, yes. There we go. Good job, Brad. I blanked out on it for a minute. <laughs> um, and a good way to stretch that, Brad, is just to actually lay down. And you can do, you can do this with a stretch out strap, Brad, where you can also just bring the leg up and you're gonna bring it over to the side right. here. And I'm now that's stretching here. And you can hit different angles of the TFL by, by of the IT band, you know, attaching the TFL by, by how you move it. Right, so in other words, you're saying if you bring the leg up this way, further or down this way. And normally, I guess we're gonna to have to remove the covers because yeah. your foot's sitting there. You're gonna to have to get covers removed at home, that's okay. <laughs> We don't mind, just tell your wife. All right, next one, Brad. Uh, hamstring and heel cord stretches. You wanna show a hamstring stretch? You better believe it. My, my favorite one is, I just simply like to go up to something about this height. A stairwell is nice with a hand rail, I remember it now, and keep the back straight and just lean into it. I'm getting a good stretch right now. Don't get all caught up in rounding your back and trying to touch your nose to your toes, your knee or whatever. That's, that's not what you want. Good posture, stretch it out. Are you gonna show that, Bob? Yeah, I thought I would. That is a nice tool for yeah, us. I think some of the, do you know? Okay, for the rest of the exercise, uh, you know, we will, we will, yeah, I see a lot of uh, requests to, uh, to, to have the link uh, of the video. Uh, we can do so, and uh, so that you can actually take a reference uh, from the video. So the, the exercise that is being shown just now, uh, can be easily done by, uh, you know, by ourselves, uh, you know, at home. Uh, and you can actually, uh, you know, arrange uh, your daily life routine in a way that, uh, you know, from the morning, you can actually, when you, before you get up from the bed, you can actually do some, uh, you know, uh, simple stretching and strengthening exercise in lying. And uh, when you actually get up in sitting as well. So, and uh, in standing, uh, if, uh, if, if the balance is not so good, then when you are doing the exercise in standing, please, uh, you know, ensure your safety. I'm going to uh, yeah, switch back to the the slide. So now for the uh, strengthening muscle, uh, you know, there's actually a different level of uh, strengthening. So you can see, uh, you know, the, the step up uh, exercise uh, that is actually can be easily done uh, within our living environment. Usually we stay in a, in a block or, or whenever we actually go out there, there will be a staircase. Uh, in fact, stair climbing is a very effective uh, strengthening exercise, but if you are still having pain, uh, you know, uh, we suggest that, you know, you start from a, a milder one, right, uh, from a level one uh, before you can actually progress to, uh, you know, level two. Now, uh, from the survey, we know that, uh, you know, majority of you, uh, you, you don't really have a difficulty in uh, performing your, uh, you know, daily activity. So if uh, level one is too easy for you, uh, you can actually consider to progress yourself uh, to level two. Now, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to uh, conclude my talk, uh, you know, uh, with uh, the uh, knee pain uh, preventions uh, with, uh, you know, uh, mindfulness uh, exercising, right? So, so for chronic knee pain, uh, you know, if possible, uh, you can actually choose to do water exercises. Uh, I, I think uh, swimming pool now is uh, being open, uh, but I, if I'm not wrong, you need to make appointment, uh, you know, before you go to swimming pool for uh, water-based exercises. Uh, for the, you know, for the pounding and the twisting activity, we recommend you, uh, you know, to actually limit uh, the very hard pounding one and a very, you know, uh, quick uh, twi uh, twisting one that is actually can be very harmful to your knee. 
when your knee is actually already presenting, um, you know, pain. Now, the third point is, uh, you know, basically, uh, you know, if you have to do those uh, activities, right, then, uh, you know, try to arrange your weekly routine in such a way that you will do it less, right, uh, so that it will be, uh, you know, not so frequent uh, to, to actually, uh, you know, cause uh, the stress uh, to your knee. Now, it is very important to bear in mind that, uh, you know, the exercises, uh, you know, to be done within pain-free range uh, to, you know, to manage the pain so that uh, our, our, uh, nervous system is actually not receiving the, the you know the wrong signal that uh, our knee is actually under attack. Yeah. So so when uh, in chronic pain uh, uh, situation, the very little stimulation can actually uh, you know induce uh, overreacting from our nervous system. So while while we are suffering from chronic pain, uh, you know it is important to actually still maintain the basic level of uh, you know activity whenever we are able to do it. And uh, you know, slowly progress our stretching and strengthening exercise accordingly. So um, last but not least, essentially our self-awareness of the exercise intensity. Now it is recommended for us to actually do 150 minutes, uh, you know, uh, exercise at moderate intensity per week. You know, based on the WHO recommendation. Um, however, how do we know? You know, how do we know that uh, we are exercising at the moderate intensity? Uh, not too much or not too little. Now, this is actually a, a table for you to actually, based on your own feelings, uh, you know, to actually have uh, the awareness of uh, what kind of intensity that you are exercising at. So the recommended, uh, you know, range is actually from four to six, uh, you know, uh, to, to uh, you know, if uh, you really cannot uh, 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 do four to six, then the recommended one is actually two to three. Now, now, the moderate activities, uh, basically, you feel like you can actually exercise for uh, longer hours. Uh, you, breathe, you are breathing uh, heavily and uh, can actually still hold short conversation. This will be actually the good intensity for, uh, you know, for you to do exercise, to accumulate at least, you know, we are talking about at least it's not aimed for 150. Uh, you know, because especially when um, due to the, uh, based on the survey, majority of us are sitting most of the time. So, uh, you know, it is, uh, it is actually very useful for us to actually think of a way to actually, uh, you know, insert pocket times for the exercises uh, throughout our daily routine. For example, if we are working from home, you know, um, you can actually uh, set reminder for you to actually do like, you know, uh, stretching exercise in the morning or strengthening exercise in the, uh, in the afternoon or, you know, some other uh, stretching exercise, uh, you know, at night. So that, uh, you know, you can actually, uh, let's say, uh, every exercise you spend about, uh, you know, five to 10 minutes to do it, uh, you know, throughout the whole day, you can accumulate half an hour. And if every day you accumulate half an hour, you know, one week down the road, you can actually achieve 150 minutes. Yeah, so, so that's the strategy that, uh, you know, uh, for, uh, for you guys to, to consider. Uh, so that, uh, you know, we, we are all uh, very busy at work and very stressful. Um, but the stretching and strengthening exercise is going to actually sustain our knee health uh, for long term. Yes, and I think we have many requests for the video. Uh, would yeah. it be possible for you to copy the link and put it in the chat? Uh, yeah, no problem. Attention to everyone. No problem. And while you're doing that, uh, maybe I can uh, say a few words. I think... Uh, uh, what we hear from the many doctors that present uh, on Brahm Center is that you know watching your weight is one of the key things that we should do, uh, not just for the health of our knees, but for the overall health uh, due to the many chronic diseases that uh, we in Singapore do suffer, uh, especially in the last 10 to 20 years of our lifespan. And uh, the other thing is that uh, good nutrition and exercise is very important. And uh, Brahm Center do conduct uh, yoga at our center. But of course, due to COVID, we have moved it online. And we do have very good teachers. And our yoga is called therapeutic yoga. And the purpose is that as we cater more to seniors, uh, we do, uh, we are very mindful that the exercise we do, uh, make sure that they are safe for you. And uh, nutrition wise, we have also launched in August, 
um, healthy nutrition assessment. So what we will do is that um, if you buy a ticket, we will arrange a session whereby we will be asking you some of your diet and we will be making some recommendation on maybe some changes that you would like to do so that you can be healthier. And all this information are available on our event bright. Ms. Yong, are you ready to take some question? Uh, yes. Uh, would uh, you like to can I double your check video so, on? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, can I double check, right? So the, the slide will be available for our participants? They are available on our Facebook. And then a few days later, it will be available on our YouTube as well. Ah, I see. Okay. So we do have 47 questions and uh, unfortunately we unlikely to be able to take them all. But uh, if you still have questions that uh, we couldn't answer, you can always send us an email to info at Brahm Center and we will um, ask Ms. Yong to help to answer them. Yeah. Yes, Yeah. no problem. So Ms. Yong, um, uh, I'll voice out a few questions. Yeah. Yep. Um, yep. Some people experience knee pain on full squat. Can glucosamine cream and supplement treat this? Ah, so uh, the glucosamine and uh, supplement is only part of the solutions. You know, just purely uh, by taking glucosamine and uh, supplement is not going to help solve the problem, uh, you know, uh, holistically. If, if I may, uh, you know, share a slide that I have uh, prepared for this. I will share my slide again, yeah? Okay. From this slide, uh, you know, you can actually see that uh, the supplement is only recommended, uh, you know, for uh, when it is actually more uh, moderate osteoarthritis and, uh, you know, and above. So, so this, uh, you know, the more holistic uh, solution is actually the exercises. Exercises is with the strongest uh, evidence. So by doing exercise, the correct form and the effective exercise alone is going to actually solve most of the problems, right? And, uh, you know, the, the combinations uh, with uh, glucosamine and uh, other supplement is, uh, you know, uh, is to add on to, uh, to help with the, the you know, uh, the nutrition uh, part of it. But it is actually more important for us to actually have a balanced diet. You know, if we have a balanced diet, we don't really need to actually, uh, you know, take uh, uh, yeah, other supplement, uh, you know, per se. The, the, the evidence on glucosamine is uh, only moderate. So we don't really have very strong evidence on glucosamine uh, for the mild uh, osteoarthritis. The evidence is actually more for the moderate or severe. Yeah, did I answer your question? Yes, I think uh, you did. Uh, you can stop the share now. Okay. If someone's cartilage is worn out, is there a way to regenerate it? No, yeah. Uh, our, our wear and tear uh, due to our aging process uh, is irreversible. So, so uh, you know, um, it's actually important to have the uh, good exercise habit and knowing, uh, you know, uh, how to actually take care of our joints uh, from our early years. So it is actually quite important for us to actually share with our children, uh, you know, the importance of uh, regular stretching and strengthening as well. Thank you, Ms. Yong. Can we increase the synovia fluid? Uh, no as well. So nothing we eat can help that, right? <laughs> no, yeah, no evidence to show that. Uh, basically, when we recommend, uh, you know, uh, what to eat or uh, what to do, uh, basically we actually need to base on the most updated evidence. Yeah, so far the evidence uh, did not actually, uh, you know, shows uh, any other supplement can actually help increase, uh, you know, uh, synovia food or or whatsoever. So if if someone has a total knee replacement. How long typically can that last? 
Ah, it, it usually uh, the, the lifespan of the uh, you know, synthetic joint can actually uh, more than 10 years, can be between uh, you know, 10 to 20 years. It depends on uh, the different loading pattern and the, uh, you know, the movements uh, demands. So for example, um, if uh, you, you have the TKR at uh, 70 uh, years old, uh, probably can actually last you, uh, you know, uh, beyond 80. Yes, uh, I actually had a friend uh, in the uh, United States and uh, she is uh, of German descent. So she's quite big, huh? quite big for uh, uh, her. And she, I think she waited, she said, she told me that she wanted to wait until the last moment so that she, can, she will only do it one time, the total knee replacement, rather than have to do it twice. Yes. The TKR is only recommended for end stage uh, OA knee, meaning uh, you know uh, is really the pain is limiting your uh, daily activity too much, uh, that and uh, you know the, the pain is basically too severe. Then then the uh, you know the knee replacement will be recommended. Otherwise, uh, you know the exercises and also the the the, the diet, you know the diets uh, modification uh, should be should be actually the first uh, strategy to deploy. Thank you. Uh, if someone is swimming and they get pain in the knee, is it due to tendon rupture? Uh, tendon rupture usually actually caused by uh, you know very immediate uh, you know mechanical uh, forces. So so if uh, if they are actually uh, during swimming and uh, you know uh, they suspect uh, tendon rupture, uh, you know the, the symptom that uh, that I have uh, described uh, earlier on. Uh, you know, if uh, if it is matches, then then you know uh, it is actually you know important for them to actually get a uh, doctor to actually check uh, for the actual cause. You know, so so when based on symptom, you can only suspect. But uh, you know the one that who will make the diagnosis uh, will be the medical doctor. So so if you are you are in doubt, you are not sure, and the symptom is actually severe, you, you yeah you should actually get checked. Yeah, I think uh, uh, you are absolutely right, right. I think in Singapore, I think we are very fortunate. Uh, we all have quite easy access to polyclinic, not so far away. And uh, if we are having pain that is disrupting our mood, our sleep, uh, don't be fearful of seeing the doctor, you know, go yeah. in and just uh, get an opinion. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if someone's knee locked during sleep, can it be unlocked? Uh, I, if I understand correctly, uh, are we referring to muscle spasm? I'm not sure, uh, not that clear. Uh, maybe let's assume that it is uh, muscle spasm. Ah, so if uh, during sleep, if you feel that uh, your muscle is, uh, you know, uh, causing pain, uh, we will recommend you to do some, uh, you know, very gentle stretch. So, so you can try to actually, you know, uh, extend your knee uh, slowly, gently, uh, so that the, the, the muscle spasm can, uh, you know, settle down. Yeah, so, so the, the, the causes of the sudden, uh, you know, uh, onset of the muscle spasm can be actually due to a different reason. For example, you know, lack of uh, certain uh, minerals in our, in our body can actually cause that. So, so when you actually experience that, it can be actually quite painful because uh, basically you feel that you can't really move uh, your leg. And uh, you know it is actually in pain, uh, but uh, you know the best uh, strategy to let it settle down is to do gentle stretch. Uh, so you try to actually uh, you know extend your leg uh, slowly, gently, uh, you know so that uh, it will the spasm can actually settle down. Thank you. Is squatting down to do cleaning bad for the knee, even though there's no pain? Well. Um, I must say that uh, you know if it is actually a very prolonged squatting and uh, you know it, if it is actually very uh, frequent, um, then it is actually not recommended uh, for uh, uh, for uh, aging uh, adults. So so our, our um, younger populations uh, when they do sport activity, you know uh, for example they they play a volleyball or basketball, you know when they do the exercises they actually do a lot of squatting. That's fine because uh, you know, they actually have a quite strong uh, muscle uh, support to do it. But uh, you know, among our uh, aging uh, populations, especially you know, if uh, our muscle strength is not that great, 
uh, I will not recommend you to do very frequent and uh, very prolonged hours of uh, squatting. Thank you. Uh, if someone get a painful and swollen knee after carrying heavy load, for example, uh, walking to the market and buying heavy grocery, mm. um, what kind of an issue is that? Well, uh, yeah, most likely the, the you know the the weights are uh, you know so your body weight now uh, is already actually quite a load uh, to our knee, especially if we if we don't have a very strong knee. Uh, you know, our body weight itself uh, is considered quite a heavy load. If you actually add on with, uh, you know, your grocery, actually you can imagine that your knee actually need to hold even heavier weight. So, so actually it go back to whether your knee strong enough or not. When we go to gym, right, when you do the leg press, uh, you know, machine for your knee strengthening exercise, usually you should set more than your body weight uh, as the target. Because if our knee is not strong enough to even hold our body weight, they will not be able to actually hold a heavier load. You know, for example, when we need to actually go and buy grocery, we will actually like, you know, tap our cell power and then the, 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 the heavy weight will increase, uh, you know, by loading more onto the joint. So, so it's actually in uh, comparison because, uh, you know, if I have a very strong knee, uh, you know, let's say my knee strength is actually double of my body weight, right? Uh, to go and uh, do shopping with, uh, you know, uh, Tapao Xiao Pao is not a problem. But the thing is that, uh, you know, if I already struggle with my own body weight, then, you know, carry heavy weight will actually cause the knee uh, even more painful. If someone usually stand most of the time during the day, maybe due to her job, mm. um, but uh, her weight or his weight is in a very healthy range, but there's still pain. Um, mm. Is it just because uh, insufficient rest? Okay, so for uh, you know, those are more physical demanding job. Uh, we recommend uh, you know, specific strengthening for you know for the muscle that you need to actually use uh, uh, prolonged hours. So let's say if you need to actually do a uh, prolonged standing, uh, you know, during your working hours, yes, you know, in between, uh, you do need to actually uh, rest, uh, you know, uh, so that you can be a balance between the rest and the and the standing. And uh, for standing, right, uh, most importantly is uh, really actually, uh, you know, uh, yeah, minimize your body weight and in the same time, strengthening up your core muscle, which is actually your uh, lower abdominal and your lower back. And, uh, you know, so, and also your uh, lower limb muscle increase, uh, including your hip and uh, knee and ankle muscle. So for standing, right, um, it is actually more than just knee. So, so basically, your whole body actually need to be able to actually stand, uh, you know, uh, with a very good alignment. Uh, and then also, you know, uh, yeah, evenly distribute the, the, the load uh, to the joint. So the alignment that is actually in standing is also in very important. So you need to learn how to actually, you know, uh, stand uh, with a, a ergonomic uh, consideration so that you are not just uh, loading your body weight, uh, you know, uh, on one joint for too long. Yeah, and then the shoes that you wear also actually need to consider because you are able, you, if you are, you, if you are, you are going to actually stand, uh, you know, prolonged hours uh, every day, then it actually warrants us uh, to actually, uh, you know, uh, yeah, pay attention to what kind of shoes that we wear. So the shoes should, should be able to actually help, you know, distribute your weights, uh, you know, evenly with a good cushion, you know, and uh, so that uh, your, your uh, joints is not, uh, you know, under uh, stress uh, for too long hours. Even though just standing, right, uh, you know, it's because if the prolonged loading uh, onto the joint, uh, yeah, if uh, without sufficient rest, the joint will actually uh, uh, will not be able to actually withstand that kind of uh, hours. Um, many people, you know, when they walk, their knees start to make a uh, cracking noise, at least one of the knee. Is that normal? No, not normal. Our normal walking will not have that kind of uh, noise from our joint. So uh, it actually means that, uh, you know, uh, structurally, uh, the weight is not being distributed evenly. So uh, it is actually, you know, if you are, if not yet uh, have a pain symptom, this is exactly the, you know, the early, uh, you know, uh, intervention timing that you should grab to prevent uh, the pain from, uh, uh, you know, worsening. So, so, so my recommendation is actually for you to, uh, you know, um, go and uh, see a doctor and then ask uh, to refer uh, to a physio so that the physio can actually, you know, look at your alignment 
and then teach you the correct form of the exercise. Um, the, the fastest way is actually to go to polyclinic. The polyclinic is actually, uh, you know, uh, equipped with a physio clinic. So you don't really need to actually uh, go all the way to acute hospital, uh, you know, uh, yeah. Or, or, or to actually go and see a specialist, uh, you know, if the mountain, the, if the symptom is actually still mild, you can actually just uh, go straight to polyclinic and uh, see the physio there. Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. For someone who is uh, above 65 or, yeah, above 65, uh, is it recommended for them to continue, continue jogging or is walking a better option? If, uh, you know, uh, anyone uh, more than 65 years old, if they are still able to run, uh, please continue to do so. Um, it, it's the, the, the ability to be, uh, you know, to, to run and to jog is actually, uh, you know, an indication of a higher function. So if someone that is actually, uh, you know, getting older and still able to actually uh, achieve a higher level functions, they should do more, uh, you know, um, active exercises so that they can actually, uh, you know, continue to enhance their, their you know, uh, functional performance. So, so I will not, um, I will not uh, just uh, recommending walking because uh, unless they can't, uh, they can't do higher level, then we only recommend the, 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 the you know, low, uh, lower level that is actually more suitable for them. If they are able to run, it's a, it's a very good sign. So they should continue to do, uh, you know, their, their, their exercises at higher level strongly recommended to do as high level as possible. And what happens when, if they do that, one day they discover that they have pain? Well, the, the running, uh, you know, mechanism. So, so let's say if they have been running and they, they, you know, they did not actually have any pain and one day, uh, you know, they actually start to have pain. So, so then, uh, you know, the pain is actually acute in nature. So meaning, uh, you know, it's actually due to a new uh, conditions. So it's, it's uh, you know, can be actually contribute by many different, uh, you know, uh, causes. So, so if they have a new, uh, you know, acute pain, then the, the, you know, the strategy is actually to treat this, uh, you know, um, newly onset uh, acute pain so that they can actually return to their, uh, you know, activities. So, um, yeah, we may, we may think that, oh, uh, running is causing it. Um, but if they have been running and they don't have pain, then most likely it's actually more than, uh, you know, uh, directly contributed by uh, running alone. Yeah, and uh, nowadays we see a lot of advertisement for those knee guards. Yeah, mm. uh, are they actually useful and recommended? Okay, uh, maybe I use uh, one example. Um, so, so because usually we will try to solve our problem first before we go to doctor, right? So. So, so if we feel our knee unstable, so we thought that, uh, you know, we go and uh, get a knee card and then uh, knee guard and then stabilize our knee. Then, then we, we feel more secure and then, uh, you know, uh, and, and then the pain improve. So we continue to wear the knee guard. But the thing is, uh, you know, even though it's a good idea to use a knee guard to manage the pain for uh, immediate, uh, you know, uh, short-term effects, but long-term wise, if you continue to wear the knee guard uh, for long hours without you know, the knee uh, strengthening exercise in the picture, what happened is uh, your knee muscle will get even weaker. Yeah, so, so I, I, um, I, I won't stop people from uh, getting knee guard uh, for their, you know, um, their pain control uh, for short term, but I don't recommend them to wear knee guard without uh, strengthening exercise for long term because it's, it's, it's not going to uh, help them. The knee guard will actually weaken their knee muscle further. So um, I, I guess is that the knee guard do help, but then what happened is that it give you a false sense that you know everything is all right, and yes. then you think that oh okay I'm healed, I don't need I'm to do fine. anything, yeah. and uh, one day it doesn't work again, right? And it's actually worse condition than before. Yes, yes. For long term solution, I think we need to be wiser. Uh, you know, to, to really look at uh, how we can, uh, you know, adopt a healthy lifestyle. Uh, even though we are all very busy, uh, we are all very stressed, but, uh, you know, exercises can actually uh, help us uh, in long term. So it's about, you know, every day uh, accumulate a little bit and uh, in long run, uh, you will enjoy the benefit, uh, you know, in a very uh, large uh, way. Yes, thank you. 
and I I guess um, as uh, walking is walking and running, I guess is uh, is a very common activities uh, we do, especially now that we can go out, and uh, and most of us I think we tend to ignore the pain until it becomes unbearable. So, is there any advice you would like to give? Yes, uh, thank you for uh, you know highlighting this. Uh, I I would like to highlight the importance of a uh, smooth transitions. Um, COVID nineteen is really disruptive uh, to our uh, you know uh, yeah uh, pre COVID nineteen uh, you know uh, life routine. So what happened is uh, you know before COVID nineteen we used to be uh, you know uh, uh, going out and uh, have uh, different activities uh, you know uh, elsewhere. During uh, circuit breaker, suddenly we are being confined at home. And even though you are very mindful in doing exercise, right? Uh, but the exercise choices are limited. So, so what happened is uh, after a uh, circuit breaker, and then suddenly we can actually go to, let's say, East Coast Park to run again, right? So you need to be very mindful of the sudden increase of your, uh, you know, exercise intensity and uh, frequency. The reason why just now uh, I spent, a, you know, quite, quite some time to talk about the exercise intensity it's actually for us to you know, evaluate according to our, our body conditions, you slowly increase uh, your exercises. Don't suddenly increase uh, you know, like those are uh, you know, weekend warrior, uh, you know, from Monday to, to Friday, they don't run. Then weekend, they go and run a marathon. And, and this, is, this is no good uh, you know, for, the, for, the, for the body actually, because uh, you know, it's actually quite a stressful situation that our body need to go through when we suddenly increase uh, or suddenly change our, our exercise intensity and frequency. Thank so you very much. Yeah, the, the risk of an injury will go up uh, you know, if, we, if, we, if, we, if we don't have a very smooth transition uh, you know, uh, between the changes. Now. Thank you. I think that is a very good reminder. It's like uh, when they start serving buffet again, don't go rush out and eat one time and uh, you know that's quite bad actually for our health yes 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 so uh thank you uh, miss young and uh, thank you very much for all the attendee i think uh, we know that it's a bit uh, uh a lot to absorb in the beginning because it deals with the different parts of the knee and the name but i think uh, the most useful is the video how we can uh, use those video to do a little bit of uh activating our knee properly. Yeah. Thank you, yes. Yong, and uh, you have Thank a you. very nice day. You too. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.